Hope you had a good break. Uh, we want to keep the day going to make sure we stay on time. Uh, speaking of time, it's time to talk about cloud security. So one of our customers, one of our really great partners is a company called Cloud Passage. Their challenge is really automating security to make sure that's easy for customers, make sure it's uh, something that can be applied consistently and uh, across the entire cloud. That's harder than ever. And the solution really at, at Rackspace is to combine the cloud, uh, the Rackspace cloud and Cloud Passage. So here's a little bit more about Cloud Passage. What is Cloud Passage? Well, we uh, provide automation for dynamic workloads. So specifically, the problem that we try to solve is that as customers spin up workloads, that they leverage agile development and infrastructure as a service, we find traditional security stacks uh, tend to fall short. They can't keep pace and they introduce uh, friction and additional complexity. What we produce is a platform that allows us to automate compliance and security and monitoring for all the cloud workloads, whether public cloud, private cloud, on metal, whatever the solution is. The most important thing for any security architect or chief security officer to consider when securing cloud and dynamic resources is that security can't become a bottleneck to the business unit. Companies are going to the cloud because of the obvious advantages that it provides. And if security is there blocking those advantages or even reducing those advantages, customers are going to find ways to work around it whether it's shadow IT or just not bringing everything to security officer that they need to see. So the most important thing is that your security is native to the cloud. It understands the benefits that the cloud provides and can leverage those benefits itself. We like to say that security needs to be baked in to your dynamic workloads. It should come online shields up, and that's definitely what we provide. The idea of securing workloads as they come and when they go, deprovisioning is a critical step in security. Our partnership with Rackspace goes back uh, quite some time. Rackspace is both a customer and a partner of ours, and uh, we run our own cloud in Rackspace. We have a great relationship with Rackspace. We've uh, been able to do joint projects together, we've been brought to customers together. Many customers come to us based on compliance needs. They've arrived in maybe a new business unit that's now dealing with uh, medical data, and suddenly HIPAA becomes an issue, and they find themselves scrambling to ensure they're compliant for that and our platform definitely helps them there. We're firm believers that if you've done it right, you've implemented your security correctly, the natural effect of that should be compliance. All right, please welcome Nick Piagentini. Nick. Thank you, John. All right. Hey, thank you for having me here. So I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, it's the security guy. What's his presentation gonna look like? It's gonna be one slide with the word no written on it, right? And like 48 point font which I now know is for 96-year-old DevOps guys. So that's good. See, I learned something today. But uh, we're, we're not about no anymore. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we are just acknowledge, though, that as you move to the cloud and cloud infrastructure, you are disrupting the traditional security stack. Uh, we used to have, I'm going to go back down memory lane, for those of you who are in security or how to deal with security people. We, we used to love how it was. We had uh, all of our various servers segregated into neat little segments. You know, all the servers that were like each other were next to each other, and we could do our favorite thing, which is put a box around them. Love putting boxes around things. A perimeter made our lives really easy. It was just one place we had to put our security. And uh, it was good, though uh, some would argue that it becomes hard and crunchy on the outside and soft and chewy on the inside, which is great for desserts, not so hot for security. But uh, unfortunately, what we have now is uh, we have it changing, right? The, the workloads are all next to each other. They're all mixed together. And in fact, they're, they're probably mixed together with other people's workloads, too, which initially gives us security guys a little heart murmur, maybe, a bit of nausea, sweaty palms. It's not a, it's not a thing that we really like. But the goal here is to figure out how do we secure that? And how do we secure what the future is going to look like? We talked about getting over curves, seeing what the next thing is. And we're firm believers of the fact that the, the future of the data center is hybrid cloud, that everybody will have something in the cloud, some mix. We get some uh, numbers to back us up on this. We see that 74% of, uh, that's actually 74% of people happen to be using right scale, but 74% of those people are using uh, multiple clouds. Now this means public, private, right? It might even be multiple cloud providers. So how do, we, uh, how do we deal with that environment? And what does that environment look like? Well, it's going to look like 
tons of different vendors, right? Tons of different environments. You're going to have things in your office. You're going to have things in your private cloud. You're going to have things in a managed private cloud. You're going to have things in a public cloud. And all of this makes it really, really hard to draw a box around my web servers. Now, we still need all the standard things for security and compliance. We require visibility into our various workloads. We require layered and tight access control to resources and between resources. We're going to need compromise detection, so intrusion detection. We need vulnerability analysis. None of this changes because we go to the cloud. However, the delivery parameters need to change. So it's not security that needs to change. We still need to do all the same things we've always, always done. Which is good, because uh, I'm getting older. I don't really want to learn an entire new set of things that I have to do. But we need a different way of deploying it. And we've seen a number of changes come in with virtualized infrastructure. A few of our big circles there. We no longer control the network like we used to. And boy, do we love to use the network for security. It's our favorite place to implement it. We uh, have no more hardware acceleration. Spent most of my life putting in hardware accelerated appliances to do security. To have real time interdiction of network traffic with deep packet inspection. That becomes a lot harder when I don't have a stack of Cavium chips to throw at it. We have less control ultimately of how the network grows. And that's not a bad thing, though my peers in security would tell you it is. The reason we have less control is because the network is more dynamic, it's adapting to changes more rapidly. The difference between ordering a server and have it delivered to your data center and racked and stacked for your uses in a, a month or two, as opposed to hitting a button and having a stack spun up for you during lunch, that's great for the business. It really is hard for security, unless we change the way we deliver it. So how do people attempt to do this? And why is there such this negative interaction between security and DevOps? Well. They start with endpoint security agents. These are agents that were built for pretty buff physical servers that used to live in your data center with plenty of extra headroom. What we find is they tend not to be able to survive the translation to the virtual space. They take up too much processor, too much memory. Your workloads are leaner. All right, they can't afford that overhead. Virtual appliances, kind of hit on this already. We've lost hardware acceleration, makes it much less effective. And again, where do you put them? Where is the perimeter of your hybrid cloud? You know, where do you draw that line? Does that line actually give you real security, or is it just a false sense of it? And finally, hypervisor-based security. Well, it's limited in that you need to own a hypervisor. And the whole reason we're all here is that, at least for some of our servers, we don't own the hypervisor, so we can't use it there. And you can't have a security solution that works in some places and not others. Right? You need the flexibility to grow your business the way you want. And you can't have a security team telling you you can't use a new technology. So what's our solution? We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on our solution per se, but we call it Halo. And it's a software-defined security. And it's built, and it was conceived and born into the cloud environment. So everything that you might imagine is powerful for your DevOps team to build solutions is powerful for Halo to secure those solutions. We run a cloud-powered security analytics engine. That's a great term. We used to have a shorter term for it, but marketing said we couldn't use it anymore. So now I have to say cloud-powered security analytics engine. Good thing I like to talk. So what does this mean? We took all the intelligence you would normally find in your security agents and in your management consoles, and we moved it to our own elastic application, which, by the way, runs in Rackspace. So now we have the ability to be dynamic and to grow. And you as a customer don't need to pay for that security tax, that overhead, that processor, to actually perform all the complex tasks that go along with a modern security platform. And then the other side of this is a tiny little lightweight <laughs> workload-based agent. And it can be so lightweight because it has no intelligence, because our cloud-based security analytics engine has all the intelligence. And this allows it to be baked into your workload. It allows it to be part of your DevOps process. It allows it to come and go as needed. So to give you a breakdown of the 
good things about our product, and really the good thing about any software-defined security product you would need to look at, is it needs to be comprehensive. You can't install dozens of point solutions for security in your virtual workloads. That's ridiculous. It's going to slow you down. It's going to take away all the advantages of going to some kind of agile or dynamic environment. All right, so you need a platform that gives you all the things you need, all the things around that security dot. It needs to be baked in or built in. It has to integrate with the processes that you use. It can't be an extra hurdle. It can't create a, a speed bump. We have uh, people on our team that like to call it frictionless. Now, my background's in engineering, so I know, I know it can't be fully frictionless. It's a very low coefficient of friction, right? So frictionless agent deployments. We need to make sure that it doesn't slow down what you're doing, that it doesn't impact your workloads. And it has to come into being with that workload. That way DevOps can build systems as fast as they want. The security team can say, yep, go for it. Try and outpace that security. Oops, I clicked one too fast now. Automated. You cannot be touching each individual workload. You need a centralized platform where you make logical policies built around broad logical objects. And then our analytics engine can crunch that down to the numbers that actually have to go out. You should never be touching the individual system. That's what automation is for. Right? That's what makes infrastructure as a service so powerful. It has to be able to run anywhere. It cannot be limited to a particular environment. It can't be private cloud only or public cloud only or, or physical server only. We run anywhere. So your on metal solution, your managed cloud, your traditional public cloud with rack space, your private cloud through them, same security solution across. And you can move resources between them without worrying about having to build a new security stack. And finally, it has to be at any scale. Who knows when your business is going to pop, hit that curve, suddenly you're instantiating hundreds of new servers, hit the load, and you, you just got featured on Lifehacker or something like that, right? So it'll suddenly you get hit. Well, your security needs to grow elastically as well. You've got that tied up really nicely for your business. How's your security going to scale with it? Do you have to order more boxes when you get that load? Because we are dynamic. Because we are in the cloud. We leverage that same advantages we are able to grow with you and conversely shrink. If you're a seasonal application where certain times of the year you acquire a huge amount of more compute and other times of the year you're somewhat dormant, you shouldn't have to pay for security throughout. You pay for what you use, when you use it, which is what we now all expect. Right? To summarize and to stay on time for you guys, consistent security compliance across all your platforms, the ability of it running in the workload lets you future-proof. You don't need to know what your next year's design is going to be, whether it's going to be public or private, what hybrid you're going to use. We'll be able to follow it wherever it goes. It lets you to maximize the efficiency and embrace everything that's great about infrastructure as a service, everything that Rackspace can provide you, and a fast time to value, because you're not installing servers, you're not managing databases for this, you're merely dropping an agent on your workloads through your chef or puppet scripts, and you're running the rest of it through our, our SaaS-based portal. Excellent. I'm going to give you back 30 seconds or so, and thank you all for listening to me today. Thank you. Thanks, Nick.